SOC education tutorial on how to perform a cerebellar exam. In this video we look at how to perform the exam in under 5 minutes. We also look at a few tips and tricks to make sure that the exam is performed correctly, as well as going into a brief overview into the interpretations of what you find on a cerebellar exam. Let's take a look at the exam being done in 5 minutes. The structure we suggest for the cerebellar exam starts by getting all of the standing assessments out of the way. Once the patient is sat on the couch, you can begin to elicit signs in the arms. From here, you can move to the face, testing the eyes and speech. And finally, with the patient sat on the couch, you can assess tone and reflexes. Hello there, my name is Ricky Sharma, I'm a fifth year medical student. Can I please confirm your full name and age? Uh, yeah, it's Alex Fleming, I'm 23. Can I call you Alex? Yeah, that's fine. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm here today to perform an examination of a part of your brain known as the cerebellum. Mm -hmm. It's going to involve me asking you to perform some actions and copying some of mine as well. Is that alright? Yeah, it sounds like it'll be fine. Okay, before we start, I'd ideally ask the patient to be exposed fully to their underwear and I'd position the patient at 45 degrees, which he is already. Are you in any pain? Uh, no, I'm not. Are you comfortable? I am comfortable. So looking around the bed, there's no signs of any walking aids and medications, and observing the patient, he appears well and there's no gross neurological deficits. Do you need any help because standing up? Uh, no, I can manage, thank you. Okay, can I please get you to walk forward? Yeah, sure. Can you stop there? Mm -hmm. Can you turn around for me? Yeah. And can you walk back to the bed with one, with one foot in front of another? Yeah, sure. That's great, stop right there. There's no ataxia and there's no ab uh, abnormalities in tandem gait walking. Uh, could you please um, stand uh, forward? Mm -hmm. Close your eyes. That's great, thank you very much. Robert's test is negative. Uh, could you please lie on the bed for me? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Could you please sit both your hands out and clap for me? And lift them up and turn them over. And copy them. Great, can you do it on the other side? Thank you very much. There's no disturbed or kinesia kind of present. Um, can you now, uh, you with your right index finger, touch your nose? And can you touch my finger? That's great. Back to your nose, back to my finger. To your nose, and finger. Thank you. Can you copy on the other side? There's no intention tremor or pulse pointing. Um, now, you look at my finger and keep your head still and just follow my finger with your eyes. Okay, did you see double vision at any point? No. Okay. There's no nystagmus present either. Um, so keeping your head still again, could you please look at my fist? I look at my hand, back to the fist, hand, and go between the two as quick as you can. That's great. Um, and there's no abnormalities in saccadic movements. I'm now going to ask you to repeat some phrases for me. Can you please, please say the words British Constitution? British Constitution. And baby hippopotamus. Baby hippopotamus. There's no slurred speech or staccato speech heard there. Uh, I'm now going to assess tone in your legs. Could you please try to relax them? There's no abnormalities in tone in, uh, tone in the legs. Could you please sit on the side of the bed for me? That's great. And no pension or reflex were observed. Thank you very much, that's the end of the examination. Do you need any help getting dressed? Oh no, I can manage, thank you. Okay. To complete my exam, I perform a full neurovascular uh, exam of the patient, and I examine cranial nerves 5, 7, and 8 to confirm any cerebellar pontine angle lesions. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure the patient raises their hand right off their palm in order to expose even subtle deficiencies in movement. Deficits of coordinated movement such as pass pointing or intention tremor are only apparent when the target is at the extreme of the patient's reach. To expose nystagmus, 
hold your finger at the maximum of lateral gaze. However, two to three beats are normal. The cerebellum, as part of the brain, is involved in three main functions. Smooth eye movement, speech, and coordinated movement of the joints and limbs. As such, in a cerebellar exam, what you are trying to elicit are any deficiencies in any of these three areas. Thank you.